All right, welcome everyone. Uh, today's topic is Isolated Realms with Leo, and take it away. Uh, thanks. Uh, so I am not presenting anything uh, really new as in design. This is what uh, has been discussed uh, from the last meeting. Uh, and I just wrote a polyfill based on uh, Caridi's uh, API design just to show as a proof of concept for what we do want. And this already helped me identify some uh, questions that I'm gonna bring uh, to this presentation as well. Uh, for now, let me try to share my screen. Oh my God. Now Zoom shows so many things. And of course, my system preferences uh, need to are requesting me to enable again sharing access, which is being done. Let's see if I can share. Yeah, you could can probably see my screen right now. Um, your screen's visible. Yes, thanks. Um, so there is a preview. So this is just like, uh, mostly uh, this readme file is a copy and paste of uh, Caridi's original um, API design here. Uh, what is more important uh, from this is just checking out what we have there. There is one small modification in this uh, uh, class declaration. And what I have here is still like in this API, I'm still writing the, an evolved method that can only uh, return primitive values. Um, I have a function and async function constructors uh, that can also be only accept primitive arguments and can only return primitive values as well. Um, we're gonna have the import for uh, injection. I have, I'm gonna discuss some questions I already uh, have about it. And uh, we have a draft of this wrapped callback function. This is a, a some, some way, it's still like, that connects and can be used to build what Daniel suggested, but I, I also have another suggestion on top of uh, this wrapped callback function and Daniel's suggestion on how we actually send functions to the other realm uh, or some, how do we enable uh, the realms that we create to, to use callbacks uh, as they cannot receive non-primitive values such as functions. Um, nothing has changed here on the, like the bridge function constructors. So uh, our function is still the same from what we presented, async function as well. Uh, the import bridge in this polyfill is not, re uh, not resolving to anything. You still get a promise. That is a promise from uh, the incubator realm and uh, that is connected to the uh, uh, the import injection that is created in the other realm. So when the promise in the incubator realm is resolved, it resolves to this promise uh, too. There might be problem with the ticks, but there is still the problem where it doesn't resolve to anything. So I like to, one, of, one part of this discussion is actually discussing the value of just have like, just injection uh, injecting code, but without working on uh, creating the, a namespace. Um, and this wrapped callback function is something that I, I I'm not sure if we actually presented this in the SES meeting. Karidi, feel free to interrupt me and uh, say that. if I'm saying anything wrong, uh, you mute it. I can see you. Okay. I, mean, um, I, I, I did think uh, we, we talk about it. 
Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yes. And then that uh, led us to discuss uh, Daniel's Connect uh, API. So uh, mostly of what this is doing today is uh, wrapping a uh, wrapping a function in this realm that can uh, and then allowing this to be sent uh, to the other realm as a callback. Uh, but it's still like it doesn't share a realm cross realm identities. Like the realms, they never like they can never uh, verify at the identity of the other realm. Like both from inner and outer realms. Um, this polyfill is just like one of the things that I, I like in this polyfill here um, is that out of the box, it it is working as like yes, um, it is working so far. One of the things that I am actually not being able to do right now is using this wrap callback function to. I haven't implemented any, any form as well to share the wrap callback function from one realm to another. So um, I could not transfer a callback from realm A to realm B and both being in the realms of realm C. Um, so yeah, this is not implemented yet, but I, uh, I still have like, uh, valid questions. Let me open the uh, the polyfill repo where I actually have some issue tracker there, and this is just like uh, recent. I'm just using this as a proof of concept. So these are some of the questions that I uh, identified uh, with my with our team at Salesforce. Um, there's still some investigation on the usage of generators and async generation uh, generators. I still don't feel uh, much of a, like use case for generators, but there might be something. That, so this is still open for investigation. Uh, but I think this is still remains for now as a law priority um, because it doesn't like it might add to to the uh, to the API, but it's still not necessary to unblock this API. Um, this is actually solved, the, the, the second one. Let's skip this one. Uh, we need to imp explore the import function because um, for now, what it means to just inject code, uh, but if you cannot uh, handle uh, the receive namespace uh, object, the module namespace object from the inject code, so I, might, I, I want to explore the import function to, to see if we can actually also name a uh, namespace or a new binding or something that we can handle there. Um, Leo, a question? Yes, um, sure. The, uh, uh, as, I've, as I've said before, as far as I'm concerned, there's sort of one compelling use case and it's, uh, and it's the required use case of a transparent membrane, um, uh, is that reflected here or should it be reflected here? Are these steps towards a transparent membrane? Um, I don't know, Curry, do you know an answer for that? Well, I have a very similar question. I see, I see also that Daniel has a question. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen these before. Uh, I didn't get, get a chance to talk to Leo about it. I think, uh, it's probably in a step toward that goal, uh, Mark, trying to see what kind of implementation can we have uh, that allows to implement the fully functional membrane. I wanted to try it with the actual membrane that we use, the near membrane, but we haven't get to that. I haven't get to that yet. Uh, in terms of the API, we talk about Daniel's proposal, which is a little bit more advanced, uh, say lower level. Uh, we Last time that we discussed this, I believe we say uh, Daniel's proposal seems to solve all the problem. It's just very, uh, 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 very tricky for people to understand. Even for us, it was difficult to understand how it works and the coordination between uh, the incubator realm and the realm itself. I'm not sure why Leo was exploring the previous API. Um, 
I, I, I think some of the questions still apply, like what, what is the result of the import uh, promise? Um, both cases, both APIs will have the same problem, like what is it that is resolved to? Um, but, but I think it's, to answer your question, Mark, I think it's getting to the point where we can try a few things. I don't think this is that far from Daniel's API, by the way. I think it's going to be super difficult to go from this code to Daniel's API. At the end of the day, it's just um, fairly similar. Now to answer Daniel's question. Um, um, so for the wrap function callback, I actually have some feedback from the team that I, I've had a sync with the team for clarification with everyone. I have a sync with the team, uh, but not with Caridi yet. So I had feedback from the team on like, I showed uh, the team both the wrap call, uh, function callback and Daniel's uh, API. And uh, neither of them were like the best option from the team. Like someone, uh, John David Dalton uh, was the one who suggests like, why don't, uh, don't we actually just do what we have in the wrap callback, uh, wrap, wrap function callback? Uh, oh, why don't we just like handle when we create a new function uh, from this API's constructor? Why don't we just handle uh, any function that we give to them to set as a callback? Because what we create is just like uh, a mirror uh, function in the, uh, on the other side. And it's similar to what Daniel is, uh, does, but like we, we just can do it like directly from this API. I, I really don't need to create a wrapped callback function. I could just like pass a function and let the realm uh, create it underneath. Yeah, but Leo, but before, before getting into the wrap API, I think uh, I'm trying to, un, uh, to explain a little bit, it, it, is, it is my opinion that if we don't have a, a, a mechanism for people to reason about these, and when, when I say reason is like, really understanding what's going on. If you don't have a way to pass some sort of function that can be called back, you have to do a, an abstraction layer that does that for you and use a more lower level API like Daniel's proposal. So you, and I think we agree on a previous meeting that with Daniel's proposal, you will be able to create these fake uh, functions kind of thing in user land. You'll be able to create a realm. And Daniel, keep me honest here. You'll be able to create a realm. You'll be able to um, add a function to that realm saying, if I give you this function, return a symbol maybe. And when I see this symbol coming in through the calls that I do to the other side, I will transform that into something, whatever it is. So you, you'll be able to implement your own version of this is a function in one side that corresponds to a function on the other side, but in user land. And I think uh, that's possible. I, I believe it's possible with Daniel's proposal. I do believe that it's going to be very complicated for people. And there will be abstractions. People will create libraries to do this and yada, yada. But I believe a, a mental model where you create a ROM and you have these intuitions about what functions will do when you pass in as callback and so on, when you're talking to the realm, will be a much more nicer approach. But that's just my initial reaction to a very low level API like what Daniel is proposing. Yeah, um, just for, uh, for the records as well, uh, I still like, it, I am still in the early stages with this polyfill. I intend to add to this polyfill uh, an API that uh, there is uh, the API designed by, uh, by Daniel. I want to uh, write tests for that and write this implementation just to, um, so that can actually help me because it's still being tricky for me to fully understand how that API uh, works and, and try to, and how to explain that. I was not able to explain uh, Daniel's API to, to my team uh, when I synced with them. Uh, neither, uh, like they could like, actually read that API and, and they did not understand uh, what was going on there. 
Yeah, Daniel, so, uh, just Daniel, just for for so Daniel Zena, that's why he was expecting as well. But obviously, I haven't been able to work with Daniel on the API, trying to figure we can make it a little bit more ergonomic and simple. Maybe a simplification there will help. Um, in terms of the wrap function, Daniel is really about. I have a function in the incubator realm. I want to create something that I can pass as an argument when I call a function from the newly created realm. And that function can, can be used by, will be received by the other side and call it at some point. It's not going to be the same function. It's a different function. That's, that's how the wrapping works. It's basically two functions connected internally by internal slots. In this case, in the polyfill pro is a weak map. Uh, and these two functions, one is from one side, one is from the other side, and they are somehow connected. And when you call one, it really calls the other one. And you have high privilege in the polyfill that does the, the calling on, on the other side and the try catch and all that. Um, so that's, that's all what wrapping function is. It's only one direction, by the way. It's only from the incubator to the um, new realm. So you can pass it and the new realm code can actually call it and it as, as many times as you want, you get a function executed on the incubator realm. And that opens the door for a, a much more simple way of communicating between the two sides. Um, that that can, that is a, a thing to discuss, and I, I was hoping to to get ch a chance to talk to you, Daniel, directly, and see if that fits into the model, and if that is a potential simplification, or what are the implications of having that kind of special functions, which in the past we say ah, we don't we don't really want to have a special kind of function. In this case, probably a frozen function or something like that. So uh, I definitely see how the, the API that I propose is hard to understand and how that makes it something that we could, that would be good to, to iterate on. What I'm having trouble understanding about wrap function callback is how you execute code inside the realm. Like, is there a way to do that without eval uh, that allows these, this callback? I mean, you need kind of like an inverse of wrap function callback that makes it so that the incubator realm can call code that's inside the realm, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Daniel, I, sorry, I, I got a. Can, can you repeat the question again? I, I missed the, the entire. So, uh, uh, if I seconds. understand correctly, wrap, what wrap function callback does is it uh, it passes into the realm something that it can call to make a call back out to the incubator realm. Or is it the other yeah, way around? No, the wrap yeah. function, the wrap function returns something that can be passed through the regular communication between the two sides. Um, and that is not a primitive value, basically. I mean, that it's, it could, could be that it returns a, a symbol that, that will work as well, but it, it prepares the function. So on the other side, they will get a function that is a mirror of this function in terms of functionality. Okay, so you this gives you a way that the realm can call code in the incubator realm. Uh, yes. So correct. how do you yes. do the reverse? How do you make it so the incubator realm can trigger code to run inside that that inner realm? Well, in in the case of your API, um, you could do the, the the import of a module, a module block, for example, or something like that. In these API that Leo was implementing is via the function. So when you create a function, you're creating a function on the other side and you can call it from the incubator call as many times as you want. Um, yeah, uh, I, I can show you uh, the example here that I'm showing on the screen. Uh, so these lines here, I just create fn is my wrapped uh, function. I'm just wrapping this function here. Everything that you see here is in the incubator realm. Um, I still receive a function like this wrapped function that I receive here is still like from this incubator realm, but it does have a reference of another function from the uh, from that realm that I created. Yeah, the analogy that I use, uh, Leo, Leo, the analogy that I was using is, this is not different from a function or bind or something like that. It's kind of a bind, 
uh, it, re it returns a new function, but this function is a native function that executes a function um, sort of, yeah, on yeah. the other side. And then, and then how so, do we send this into the realm? Uh, yeah, that's the thing. So here, uh, when I actually uh, create a new instance of a red function, by red, I mean the inner uh, realm. Uh, anything red is in a realm, anything blue is the outer or incubator realm. Okay, so here I create a function uh, and this function receives uh, an argument, uh, uh, has a parameter CB and the function bodies like return type of, of C CB. Um, so here is actually me running a function from the other realm, this is a reference. So red FN is still not seen as the, uh, it still doesn't share the identity, but when I call this, I actually gonna uh, call in the realm this function that is created there, and I'm gonna give them this wrapped function fn. Um, and yeah, then, I think three three ninety eight is the, the, the return one. value. Three ninety eight is the one, um, and this is really the one that breaks the invariant that we were talking about in previous yes. meetings. Because now you you are calling a function from the other side, but you're actually passing a function that happens to be a wrap function. Uh, so you're not only allowing primitive values; now you're also allowing kind of functions. That's so that's the, the part that is a little bit bad from question from, the, from my perspective. Yeah, go ahead. So when you talk about this wrap function being passed is the wrap function a primitive value is the wrap function a function that's, that's exactly what i'm asking that's exactly what i'm asking like if, if it is a function then um it's simpler but you break the invariant if, if wrap functions returns a symbol then it's fine because it's a symbol but someone has to unwrap that symbol in the way in because you're calling a function on the other side you're passing a symbol as an argument but on the other side they should receive a function because that's a function that then you will call call it back. Yeah. So uh, so 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 let me. My reaction to all this is that um, the from the perspective of the purpose of this low level mechanism is to enable us to build a membrane. Membranes are all about automatic wrapping and unwrapping and having tables to keep the two sides in correspondence and all that. So it's kind of a level confusion for the low level mechanism to kind of have just a little bit of membrane like mechanism for right. the sake of um, being more ergonomic at this uh, while being less low level. The ergonomic thing that does wrapping and unwrapping will be the membrane. And what we want to enable that is um, something that's as as simple and uh, you know as simple and as as uh, with the, as clear formal properties as possible. And I think that something that's not creating new implicit wrapping and unwrapping semantics at the low level, especially if it costs extra complexity, um, is is more attractive. I, I think that the the difficulty of understanding a very, very simple low level API is, is the way to fix that with regard to wrapping and unwrapping mechanism is to build a membrane on top of it. So, uh, yeah, and, and that's a, the part of the conversation that we haven't had, uh, at least myself and Daniel. We talk about it, but we, we, didn't, get, we didn't get a chance in the last two weeks to talk about it. And, and, and so part of the simplification is see what, what is the layering here? Like, so can we have two different APIs, one for one thing, the other one for the low level. Um, I, I have a clarification question. Um, so what, Mark, do you mean you prefer uh, the explicit uh, wrapping or the implicit? Uh, I, 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 the, I prefer the mechanism itself to I don't want the, the low level mechanism itself to be doing wrapping and unwrapping, uh, especially if there's any complexity cost. 
because if it's if it's adding complexity of wrapping unwrapping for the point for the point of ergonomics, it's okay. It's it's doing it at the wrong level. Okay, so uh, what my uh, so I believe my API to be doing like what is uh, what I call explicit here because you do the wrapping manually. I think the same thing goes with uh, with Daniel's API. I think my wrapper uh, wrap uh, wrapping function does the same thing as uh, Daniel's API does. It just it requires more uh, steps, uh, more separate steps. Daniel's do, uh, API does the same steps, but all in a single function call. Uh, but it, uh, what my team suggests was what I believe you don't like that was a, like implicit auto wrapping. It, let's say this is just a regular function. And when the red function uh, receives this, it auto wraps any function that you give to them. So this is what I'm uh, not doing today. And that, that was a question from my team. And I believe that's to be the answer. And I, there is a hand oh. raised. Well, I think, uh... So it, it, I think a, a, a few more layers to that, Leo. I think the low, the, the, what, what the team was asking you is actually a more high level API yeah. where you can, you can, you, you, you as an author of a code, a, the developer, you don't even need to know that there is a clear separation between the two sides. You just yes. pass functions around and it just works. And, uh, the question is, can we do that in user land? If we can do that in user land with the Daniel's API, then great. Uh, I think we have to put a time. I, I, the only the only way to um, um, unblock this is to really spend the time on it. And uh, apologies because I haven't get the chance to, to do that. But uh, maybe maybe Daniel, we can we can spend some time uh, later this week. Uh, one of the mornings right. for me and uh, and see what we can do there. I feel that the uh, resolution of a promise to the import to be undefined, that even though it works, is just going to be weird for people. Um, and that's and, uh, that's the first part I want to discuss. If we can, because people already have some expectations about what import does. And what are you going to load there? And I, I believe if there is an auto wrapping for the import itself, the result of the import, um, it will be a lot more, more nicer for people to be able to interact with whatever module they load on the other side. But that introduces a bunch of other problems. Um, so maybe we can start there and then drill down from there, see, if we can do anything to make it a, a little bit more easier for people to understand what the API will do for them. Um, if we don't have a way out, and we can, wanted to continue doing the low level, I'm fine with that too. So I'm, I'm sympathetic to the idea that a, that a high level API would, would have benefits in terms of being more intelligible. I'm a little concerned about if this ends up involving wrapping, but if it ends up being really simple, like I could imagine wrapped function, wrapped callback function being pretty simple, um, then maybe it makes sense. What, uh, what I'm most concerned about in this API is the way that to get code to run inside the realm and to be able to call that code that's inside the realm from outside of the realm, you need to eval strings. And I really wanna find an API that doesn't require evaling strings. I think there's a way to make like the equivalent of a, wrapper function callback that takes a module specifier as an argument or module block um, where the, that module block default exports a function and then it makes a wrapper function for that. Um, and I think we can- uh, Yeah, I, yeah I think that, that one is fine. Yeah. I, I think uh, that part of the API is not the one that I care much about. Well, that's, we can you do know, that, this is something that I mentioned last meeting that I really feel strongly that we should come up with an API that doesn't require you to eval strings and that this API still still does. So I hope we can work together to find something that, that doesn't. I think, you know, rather than connect, having it be that you have this way that 
you can eval something that's that's like a synchronous function. I can see ergonomic benefits to that, and I can imagine us finding a way to do that that doesn't create so much indirection that it's like at the wrong level. So, Daniel, uh, 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 there, there is a, a two-point uh, comment that I have here, both for when you actually uh, do, uh, yes, there is this problem with uh, evaluation of strings, uh, and yet your uh, the Connect API uh, there you, that you need something that I, I believe it's hard to to check or verify because you first require like one function that needs to return a fun, uh, return a function, uh, and another argument is a string that evaluates to a function that also return uh, that needs to return uh, a function. Um, so both ways are not only like the string evaluation, but you also like the need that is, uh, the fact that you need a function that returns a function, uh, it's kind of, it's hard to verify and uh, somehow like test. This wrapped uh, function still requires like to, to have uh, for, to send the red realm some string evaluation. When I have a wrapped function, I still need, uh, I still send it through a function that I create through string evaluation, if you see my screen. Um, but if we do have the wrap uh, callback function, if I uh, wrap this, um, I like for wrapping, the wrapping process doesn't need any string evaluation. And when we have module blocks available, we could definitely explore uh, the import inject injection to find a way to create this. Uh, so yeah, we could I think probably- I, 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 block on multiple blocks. We just need, yeah. you just pass in a multiple specifier. So I think, I yes. think we, should, we should make a smaller meeting and work out a way to make this API work without evaling strings. Because I yeah, think and, I, and I think uh, it's one, one thing that I wanted to notice is that uh, the wrapping or unwrapping has uh, is a different problem than evaluating a string. We could do it with modules. We could do it different ways. The the wrapping and unwrapping is just how are we going to um, allow these two sides to communicate with each other, uh, independently of how you get to evaluate the code. Those are separate questions. So I'm, I'm definitely sympathetic to this to this goal of making the API more intelligible. The API they designed was clearly not very intelligible. Uh, and I think we can come up with another one that will meet the important properties, but not require you to eval strings or to have these uh, kind of wrapper indirections that Mark is concerned about. I think I think there are other ways we could figure this out. And I, and I think synchronous functions might be enough because you can build async functions and generators on top of that just by having one side call a function on the other side repeatedly, right? Uh, Daniel, yes, I'm yes, exa exactly, Daniel. So if we get the functions to be something that you can pass around, you can then implement in user line all kinds of abstractions around it. Yeah, I, I just uh, wrapped yeah. something uh, that this might work in, uh, you just have like, you just give a name. Uh, if you don't give this name, you can try to resolve to what is default. I am not sure if we should, uh, we should probably consider expanding this if we want multiple names. So you, if you send, uh, if you actually use an array of, 
names that you want to use. Uh, you could probably receive a collection of names if you want multiple. We, we want to explore, I, I would like to explore that. And this way it doesn't require, like you could still receive a wrapped function from the callback in code that you inject through modules. Yeah, this seems sure. like a great way to let the, uh, to let the outer realm call code in the inner realm. Then to let the inner realm call code in the outer realm, you have this wrapped function constructor. And then the main question was, how do we pass that in? And uh, I think I think it might be worth kind of iterating on this. Like it would be nice if the API felt somehow symmetric. The connect function that I proposed is symmetric, but it's very confusing. So maybe we could figure out some version of import wrapped or wrapped function call that, that kind of feels more like it's the same thing on both sides. What, what do you think? Yeah, let, let, let's iterate on that. Uh, yes, we, yeah, I think it needs iteration. <laughs> That's what I'm good, that I was going to say. We don't but have enough time in this meeting for It's really good that you're working with the team of developers in Salesforce who will actually be using this API. So it's not just us talking about it among ourselves. And uh, yeah, if there's some discussion with them that I could join, then I would also appreciate that. Well, I, I think there is this uh, separation as well as like this team also uh, expect something that is more on the high level. Of course, the, the questions are very valuable, uh, but they, of course, they're gonna like we want to uh, work on the what is good for being a low level function that actually does the work that if like with more uh, clarity and etc rather than just bring something that is like the final final user of a library um so it's good but it's i don't think it's like fully uh, necessary to always have this full sync with them I might be wrong. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I'm still a little bit worried that we won't meet their expectations even with a slightly higher level API. I guess this is along the lines of the point Mark was making that the high level API may be membranes and short of that, maybe nothing will meet their expectations or yeah. maybe something would, but maybe it would be too complicated. For yeah, us. Also, also the, remember that the, this team of people that, that Leo has been work, working with it, these are uh, library developers. They are the ones who will be creating abstraction for other people to use, at least for us. So platform developers creating, on top of these API, creating the layer that people actually use. Um, so it's, it's an interesting feedback though. Oh yeah, this is clearly a group of people whose uh, opinions and intuitions are important for us to be designing for. Yeah. Um, okay. I just opened this issue to not forget about what we say. I think I'm still sharing my screen. Uh, and I'm going to stop sharing right now. I shared this link uh, of this polyview in the Zoom chat. I'm going to make sure it's in the agenda. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, I think we have an, uh, a good homework uh, about this from now. Um, I don't have anything to else to show unless anyone has any, any questions, I'd be happy to, to try to answer. Well, thank you, Leo. Um, thank we're you. at 10.50. I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, uh, there, is a, there is one thing uh, I think uh, maybe interesting we can do in five minutes or so 
with the recording. Uh, there was a question in one of the issues um, from a couple of days ago, uh, trying to remember, it was from, uh, from uh, people from Mozilla, I think. Uh, um, Leo, do you remember the question from Anne? Uh, it was something about the, putting something in the agent or at the round level. Oh, the, 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 the import assertions, the type assertions. Uh, Daniel, do you remember that? Uh, sorry, what, what was the relation with import assertions? I didn't uh, understand. Is, is the, there was a question on the uh, where is going to, where are we going to put the if, sorry if the assertion types remember there is a host uh, API that you have to that the this that is specified in 262 that is used for the language to determine what are the types that are allowed or supported yeah. by the by by the engine yeah and this list, the question was, where is that list going to be linked? Is it per realm? Is it per agent? Um, and what oh. are the implications in terms of realm? Yeah. Like if there, we have there, realms. I was imagining uh, that this would be really kind of in terms of the host or maybe in the context of containers, it's per container. The container that virtualizes the module system could add more types. Um, there was a separate thing that we were discussing in the context of realms and which globals they would have about trying to, you know, standardize that across environments, even though it wouldn't really be a standard at first. And that's something that we can do with the import assertion types as well, that we could standard, you know, some of them will be in the ECMA 362 standard and some of them will be in host environments. And for the ones that are in host environments that we expect to be shared among multiple host environments, but not uh, part of the JavaScript standard, we could also declare those in a repository where we try to develop these, these common conventions. And so I have a repository for this called, um, I can't remember what, it, what I called it, but it's, it's a personal repository. I would like it to not be a, a personal repository if people feel like taking it up and, and collaborating on it. And uh, Anna Van Kestrin was just proposing that import assertion types be standardized there. Uh, but then I was picturing that, that compartments would be allowed to change that. Does that does that match with how you're thinking about it? Yeah, and that's what I'm asking here, because uh, if it is per realm, then, or even per agent or wherever we decide to put it on, um, the compartments will definitely needs to allow the the control of those those values. Because we want to maybe create a compartment that imitates node in a browser or vice versa or whatever. And in that case, you will have to provide a, a different set of assertions. Yeah, so it's definitely part of the module API. And so if compartments is virtualizing the module API, then I was imagining that compartments would be able to, to mess around with with import assertions. Yeah, my opinion is the compartment API would have to take import assertions into account. Right, uh, and the question really is because the invariants that are being described in the, in the pull request for 262, those invariants uh, describe uh, what kind of values they need to be returned, what happens if you call it multiple times and so on. And there might be something there that we need to pay attention to in order to accommodate the potential um, arrival of compartments uh, in the future. I think we should pay attention to that. That's why I, I brought it up here. Yeah, I remember, uh... When Karidi was talking about it, I finally remember that. Because there, there should be a, a map, some sort of internal map object for, for the assertion type. And I thought that would be like, it's easy for me on the realms to say, uh, 
it could be set by the uh, host, like in uh, without concern, different concerns uh, between realms, but it, this becomes a concern for compartments, for sure. Um, okay, seems like we all agree then. Yeah, the um, what will be interesting is whether the invariants that we've discussed about import assertions are enforceable when the module system is virtualized. That'll be no, that'll be interesting. But I don't want to open a can of worms this late in the meeting. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the recording.